let's make a new document. We're going to make a wood texture, kind of like a, a plywood or something. And we're going to do it with a new document. You ready for this? 10 inches by 10 inches at 300 pixels per inch. OK, it's a pretty familiar size. So close down the plaque that you made there. Pop back into Photoshop. New document, 10 inches by 10 inches, 300 pixels per inch. So 3,000 pixels all told. 300 pixels per inch, 10 inches, 10 times 300, 3,000. And the instructions say create a new layer and fill it with light gray. Very nonspecific. OK, let's give it a try. Let's make a new layer, new transparent layer there. And let's fill it, edit, fill, with light gray. Um, we've done 50% gray before. I'm guessing light gray is lighter than that. And let's take a look at this color picker for a second. We've talked about how the color picker works. You've got your hue, saturation, and brightness. This is your hue slider right here. So you choose whatever hue you want. This is your saturation. Left and right is saturation. Now, anything on the left will be a saturation of zero. No saturation means no color. So anything down the left side will be some kind of a shade of gray. And if you go to the very top, it's going to be white. If you go to the very bottom, it's going to be black. If you go right to the middle, say, I don't know, 50% of the way up, you'll have 50% gray, um, light gray. So I'm going to go a little bit higher. What the heck? Everyone's is going to be different, and that's fine. When you hit OK, there's the light gray color. Then it says, add some noise with the following settings. 300% amount, Gaussian, and monochromatic. Let's talk about that for a second. Noise, it'll be a filter, yeah, and it's going to be under the, whoo, under the noise menu. And add noise. What is noise? Like, what does noise have to do with Photoshop? Just randomness. Yeah. Back in the days of film, um, if you're you know, shooting in a really dark environment, you'd have to use a very high ISO film, and it would get what they called grain. You'd see like little chunks of, of texture in the image. In the world of digital, we call it noise, and it, it actually relates to uh, well, the same kind of effect you get with a, a record player. If you got, anybody have a record player still? There's two parts to the system. You've got the turntable, and then there's the amplifier. Let's say you've got the volume on the turntable turned down. You didn't notice. To compensate, you turn up the volume on the amplifier. You'll hear this hissing sound, this kind of static. There's this randomness to any electronic system. And digital cameras are no exception. They also get noise in the image. Now, there's a filter here where we can add noise. Normally, you want to get rid of noise in an image. You want it to be as smooth as possible. But if you've got an image that you're trying to composite something into that has noise to it, well, you may need to add some noise. And that's what we've got here. Normally, you'll be doing a very, very small amount. But we're not going to be using this noise to simulate film noise or image noise. We're going to be using it to create a really gritty sort of texture. So let's crank this amount up. And let's talk about these distributions here, uniform and Gaussian. For the most part, they don't make a really big difference. Like if I zoom in here, here's a uniform distribution to the noise. And here's a Gaussian. Didn't make a big difference. Let's leave it at Gaussian. This one does make a difference. Monochromatic. If you zoom in, let me crank this amount up really high. Oh, look at all the colors in there. If you look through the color channels, uh, don't accept what you've done yet. I'm just going to show you what's going on here. This color channel, this color channel, and this color channel, the red, the green, and the blue, have had the noise added randomly. And that results in different colors. If the red channel is brighter, we'll get a bit of a red color to it. There's your red channel. This is a fairly red pixel. Darker in the green and the blue, it's coming out red. Now, that's not what we're going for here. We want a nice, smooth, uniform, but gray noise to be added. So we're going to go under Filter, Noise, Add Noise. Bring the amount up, but also turn on monochromatic. By turning on monochromatic noise, each channel gets the exact same noise added to it. So no channel ends up brighter than the others. And I'm going to hit OK. So amount around 300% or thereabouts, Gaussian distribution, and monochromatic. And if you look through the channels now, the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel are all exactly the same. That's why there's no color to it. All right, we have noise. So we created a new layer filled with light gray, added some noise, apply a motion blur with the following settings. Wood has grain to it, but not in the same kind of grain as 
film, uh, it's got lines going across it. And if, if this was wood, it wouldn't be very convincing, would it? It would just kind of, well, unless it was like end grain, maybe like at the end of a log. But if you're looking at wood on the side, usually there's like a, a direction to the grain on it. We could simulate that with a motion blur filter. So if I go under filter, blur, motion blur, let me pop back to my layers here. Filter, blur, motion blur, there we go. You'll notice a few things. First off, you've had this little circle or a pokeball or something. That's the angle of motion blur. Like let's say you've done a photograph of the Tour de France and you know, the, the cyclist is whizzing by, uh, but you'd shoot it with a really high shutter speed. Maybe it's like you know, bright sunshine, so you're shooting at like a thousandth of a second. It looks like the cyclist is just kind of stopped there. You want a little bit of motion blur on that. You could run the motion blur filter. I'm gonna put it perfectly horizontal. Imagine it's like a slab of plywood or something and the grain goes this direction. And the distance is how far those little bits of noise, and if I zoom in there, here's a distance of two. There's before and there's after, barely doing anything. The longer that distance goes, the further it smears, and if I zoom out a bit, that grain. So if you want a really straight grained wood, you could do a really long distance. If you want a little bit of a rougher sort of wood, you can do a bit of a shorter distance. Again, everybody's is gonna be a little bit different. And I'm gonna hit okay there. So right now it kind of looks more like brushed aluminum than wood. Because wood, the grain doesn't always go exactly the same direction, does it? Well, that's where the liquify filter can come in. Look at this, it says, use the liquify filter to create a wood grain texture. Have you guys played around with the liquify filter before? Let's talk about that filter. Um, I'm gonna call it this flame image here. And I just wanna show you how this liquify filter works before we actually start using it on the wood here. If I needed to distort this flame, I guess it's got some nice little curves to it. Maybe I wanted a little bit more curviness to it. If I go under filter, liquify, it pops up in this separate window. There's Photoshop in the background. This is the liquify window. I, I can still click on these little menus in Photoshop, but I don't have access to them. I don't have access to my panels in Photoshop. It's like I'm in a separate little program here, and this is called liquify. Now liquify works in a different way than we're used to. Like if I were to use this tool here, and this very top one on the very left is called the forward warp tool, and I gave it a bit of a push. Look at that. Ooh, it distorted the flames. But if I move this to the side and we look at it in Photoshop, wait, nothing has actually happened to the flames here. Liquify works by putting a grid or what they call a mesh over top of the image. And look at what happened. When I took this and I pushed it, it distorted that mesh. And it does that for a reason. If I wasn't sure where I wanted this to end up, maybe I did a push inwards, oh, maybe a little push outwards, maybe a push inwards. And if it was updating this and actually moving those pixels every time I did it, it would soften, it would blur, it would make this image look pretty nasty over time. So by putting this mesh over top and having the tools distort the mesh, it saves that multiple steps of, of softening the image. When I hit OK, it looks at the final position of the mesh and it moves everything into that final position. Now let's just quickly talk about the tools that are available to us. This one here is called the forward warp. And you can see it just kind of pushes the, well, warps the grid, the mesh, forward. Now normally we don't have that mesh visible. We just kind of take a look at the image and we just push things around. Uh, we can change the size of the brush using the square brackets to the right of the P key. So a larger brush is the right square bracket. The left square bracket gets us a smaller brush. And that's the forward warp. That's kind of like the, the workhorse of the, the liquify tool. We have a reconstruct tool. If you realize you've messed up an area, you can take this reconstruct tool and it just kind of melts the grid back into its original shape. If you make the grid visible, you can see exactly what's happening. It's just letting that grid soften back into its original shape. And that's the reconstruct. So let's say you've been like slimming up somebody's face or something and you realize you did too much. You can use that reconstruct to just put it back into its original position. Um, the twirl tool does exactly as the name suggests. It twirls the image. And by default, it twirls clockwise. If you want it to twirl the other way, if you hold the option key, it will twirl counterclockwise. Okay, that's getting kind of cool. Uh, we have the pucker tool, which will basically just kind of suck inwards on whatever section you've put it over top of. 
the opposite of the pucker tool is the bloat tool that will bulge things outward. If you do that on a person's eyes, you get those super cute kitten eyes. There's the push left tool, which, as the name suggests, pushes left. And you might think, well, what's the point of having something that just pushes left? Well, it doesn't only push left. Think of it as a car, and it pushes towards the driver's side of the car. So if I was driving north, the driver's side of the car is on the left there, uh, which would be, you know, be heading out towards the west. But if I was heading to the east, if I was driving to the east, the driver would be on the north, and you can see it lifts things upwards. And if I'm driving south, the driver's on the east, and it starts pulling it out towards the east, towards Newfoundland. And if I'm heading west, the driver is on the south side. So as long as you go clockwise around something, you can kind of puff it outwards. So let's say somebody, your, you know, your model had uh, you know, really flat, floopy hair. It wasn't, you know, maybe it was a, a really humid day and her hair was just kind of bleh. As long as you go clockwise around, you can kind of loft that hair outwards. Or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe it's the middle of winter and it's really dry and staticky and her hair was like just poof up really, really large. And you're like, oh man, I wish I could make that smaller. Well, if you go counterclockwise around, it pushes things inward. So that's the liquefy tool. Let's you kind of mush things around. Now, how can we use that to give this kind of a, a wood sort of texture? Well, actually, it missed a step in here. It didn't show us how to do the color. Let's talk about putting a color onto this wood here. And again, everybody's is going to be different. So let's give this wood some color. We've just got this very boring gray wood. Let's go under Image, Adjustments, and let's pick hue and saturation. And we've used this one before. You know that if we grab the hue slider and we pull it left and right, hey, nothing's happening. Why do we think nothing's happening when I use the hue slider? Everything is gray, isn't it? So we've got these colors here. And you remember when we pull the hue slider, this one moves relative to that one. And this is what it was. This is what it has become. Except there's no color in any of this. Well. There is a way with the hue and saturation to force it to put color into something, and that is colorize. Give that a try. So image, adjustments, hue and saturation. Let's click on colorize, and then we can play around with the hue. We can choose whatever hue of wood we want. And saturation is basically how intense or how vibrant that color is. So I'm going to go for kind of a plywood sort of color, something like that. And I'll hit OK. And that'll give it a bit of a wood sort of tone. And then we'll play around with the liquify. If we do a filter, liquify. Wood grain always had this kind of wobbly sort of pattern to it. It's not always straight in one direction. So maybe I'll push some waves into it. The forward warp will let us kind of pull things around like this. If you want to give it a knot, you can maybe try the, the twirl tool, give it a good heft around. There's the pucker tool where it kind of sucks everything inwards a little bit. We could do the twirl tool where it kind of spins everything around. And remember with option, you can reverse the direction of the twirl. And when you're happy with what you got, you can just hit OK. One of the things you might notice around the edges of the image this weird kind of pattern. When we did that motion blur, it was only able to blur so far. When the edge was there, it wasn't able to pull things in. Well, this is a good chance to use that liquify tool. Remember how the forward warp, you can kind of push things around? You can just kind of push that out of the edge, if you want. I mean, ultimately, we're not going to be using all of this wood texture, but this is a chance to kind of push some of those little nidgy bits around. And when you're happy with what you got, you can just hit OK. And same deal, we'll save that one up as a PSD file.